So if there was the zombie apocalypse, what skills would you be bringing to the table for your survivor camp? Okay. I think that my time in theater has really made me like a well-rounded person to have an Mm -hmm. apocalypse in an apocalypse. So I used to do, I was a theater electrician. That doesn't make me like a for real electrician, but I know enough about electricity to like figure some things out. Hopefully I can also sew. I have some carpentry skills. I know a lot about cooking. I think there's a lot of like general well-rounded skills I could bring to the table. We actually, do you remember that thing? Sorry, this is a tangent. I know we've already had so many and we haven't (laughs) even started. Do you remember that thing that happened in Florida when like people started taking the drug bath salts more and there was some guy that was caught eating another guy? (laughs) And I mean, people, I did something happen with bath salts, but I missed okay. the cannibalism it was like, angle. No, no. It was like in Florida and like some guy had been like eating another guy when he was apprehended and they didn't know what it was until later. They were like, oh, this guy was on bath salts, whatever that is. I don't even know what drug that is. And I thought they literally um, meant bath salts. No, <laughs> no it's a drink. Okay. No, bath those. salts are safe. Bath salts for your bath but are safe. We probably don't need them anyway. No, we'll probably to... don't eat those either. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so the cannibalism. It, it happened in Florida. And at the time, yeah. I was working at a summer stock theater in Atlanta, Georgia. And everyone looked around and was like, this is the zombie apocalypse. And we will be okay because we will shut ourselves in the theater and we will figure it out. And everyone was like, oh, I know how to do this. I know how to do that. I know how to daisy chain batteries to get like power and whatever. And I was like, skill wise, this is a good group. Mentally and emotionally, this is not a good group. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, no. (laughs) Myself included. So, yeah, I don't know. That's my zombie apocalypse story. The time that we all thought the zombie apocalypse might actually be starting and I was one state away from case zero. I see. Well, for me, I know my top skill will be sewing, according to my mother. One time I was working on a costume and it was like a suit jacket. So I was really proud of it because those are pretty tricky to get right. Yeah. And there's like a lot of nuances and I was like, oh my gosh, look, I finished my suit jacket. And my mom, we weren't talking about this at all. She just was mm-hmm. like, that's wonderful, honey. And just think, if there was a zombie apocalypse, your skills would still be in high demand. <laughs> because everyone's going to need suit jackets for their costume <laughs> needs in the zombie apocalypse. <laughs> look, well, we'll need something to keep us you know, stylish and alive and warm. I would not ask myself to cook for the group. So I guess I would have to go out there and kill things. And uh, <laughs> I have really good hearing. So, you know, I might be able to be like up on the the watchtower, like whatever, like an ear enhancer would be like some big metal. <laughs> like a big cone. Yeah, a big metal cone. I'm like holding my ear to. And I'll be like, oh, they're coming You're from see- the east. Your secret weapon would be a glass, so every time you go to a new building, you can put it up against the door. Yeah. Like, yeah, we shouldn't go in there. There's definitely zombies. Somebody's sloshing around in their own intestines in there. (laughs) Someone's sloshing around in their own juices in there. Do not enter. (laughs) Let's let's skip this door. Spray paint (laughs) on the door. Juices. Do not enter. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, that kind of thing. Yeah, you know, I don't know. I think uh, I'll I'll do the pep talks around town, right? Just be like, hey, it couldn't get much worse than this, right? Keep your spirits <laughs> up. <laughs> the worst has already happened. The, the only direction to go is up. Yeah, let's make a board game. <laughs> like, that'll be my <laughs> contribution. I think that would be helpful, though, if you could design experiences to keep people's mind off of the zombie apocalypse. Yeah, like things that also help them if they get stuck out there with the zombies, like modified hide and seek tactics and the kids. (laughs) Yeah. All right. Well, who are we, Liz? Uh, Well, I'm Liz. I'm your co-host. And you are? And I'm Miko, your other co-host. And this is the Hot Baddies Club, where we talk about fictional characters 
that are the opposite of the good guys that we have crushes on. I know, eloquent. Seems accurate. <laughs> they're not always they're not always villains. So I sometimes I'll say like, oh, we talk about like fictional villains and people will be like, why only villains? And then I have to do my whole like, oh, well, baddies, they can be anti-heroes or thieves. They can be anything that's not a straight-laced character. Yeah. I mean, they're generally, well, they're baddies, I guess. Yeah. And... I have way too many notes for this. This is one of my okay. favorite characters and a great series. So I expect to be passionately freaking out this entire time that we're we're recording this episode. What is this okay. series that we're doing today, Miko? We are doing one of my literal favorite characters of all time. It's Ada Wong from Resident Evil. I'm obsessed with this character. No handed cartwheel flipping into our hearts. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yes, one of her many skills, which in her universe is helpful in the zombie apocalypse. Yeah, actually. Uh, so I have written up some high level notes about the series and the character for you. And if this is your first time listening, for every character, we do two different episodes. You're currently listening to part one, which is the spoiler-free episode, where we tell you a little bit of backstory behind this character, and we give you some ideas of why you might want to get excited about learning more. <laughs> it sounds like a really lame way to put it. <laughs> we try to convince you to find out more about this character, and we also tell you the best way to learn more about them to get into the yeah. series. It's kind of like an intro to the character that's spoiler free before our part two, which is spoiler full, uh, where yes. we expect that you either don't care about spoilers or you went and did the things that we told you to do. And these spoilers are worth it. So that's what we're doing here. We're talking about amazing characters. And today the series is Resident Evil or Biohazard, as it's known in Japan. Did you know it was called Biohazard? No, I don't think I did consciously. Like in some of my research, I kept seeing the word biohazard thrown around, but I didn't realize that's because that's what the Japanese name was. Sometimes the names get changed when it comes over to the, the U.S. or the Western market. From what I understood, they just had a hard time trademarking the word biohazard. And so the first game got changed to Resident Evil. And it's kind of funny because like the first game does take place in a house. I guess some of the other games kind of took place in a house number seven. But for the most part, they're more like a city or like, you know, a whole village or a castle or, you know. Yeah. I mean, uh, evil does live there technically, but it is <laughs> when you like Resident Evil is such like an institution that it's not something that I think about often. But it is kind of a pretty bananas name for a game. Resident yeah. Evil. Yeah, if you just like, you're so used to it as the franchise that you don't stop to think, what a wild name for this series. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> House Bad. Probably like. <laughs> they pulled out the spray paint. Resident Evil here. Yeah. Slashing. <laughs> yeah, so this is a survival horror action series. It's famous for having really tense scares and great boss fights, memorable quotes, such as the Jill sandwich. So mm. it's very comedic as well. Sometimes intentionally and sometimes unintentionally. Uh, it can be difficult to tell. And it's also really famous for its revolutionary game mechanics. This is one of the things that I found wild about researching for this podcast app. It's really hard to 
to clarify or like confirm a lot of this information because there's so many fan websites. There's so many like different wikis and things. So Mm -hmm. I feel like I have a lot of information here, but a lot of it I'm only like 80 or 90% sure is, uh, is true. But one of the things I saw was that they were the first to do tank controls, which is where your character like, walks forward and you turn left and right instead of strafing left and right when you move the stick those directions. I know that Resident Evil 4 it was highly praised for its third-person shooter tracking camera, which essentially means that the camera is behind Leon's shoulder, but it's like a little bit off, so he's a little bit off to the side. And that made it so you could like do a shooter, but still see the character. It wasn't really done that way before. So it was like really revolutionary. And I'd also say that they've made a lot of strides in horror VR, which has been a thing, you know, for a while, there was a lot of really great horror games on VR devices. But when Resident Evil 7 came out, it was like so intense because there's these things that happen to your hand. And oh, the yeah. characters are all up in your face constantly. I think that they really took that visceral, you know, personal space scare factor to a whole other level with that series, the this seven and eight games. So yeah, it's a game that uh, originally came out in 1996. The first one is in a house. There's these kind of government agents you know, trying to find out what happened here. They're fighting zombies and some mutated creatures. Every villain in this game is is usually stemming from some kind of infection, some kind of fictional virus that has mutated them. That's why some are zombies and some have, you know, bulked out arms or heads and things. Yeah, Resident Evil, it's not just zombies anymore. <laughs> No, there's a fair amount of dogs and uh, <laughs> things with pulsating brains that like climb across mm-hmm. the ceiling. And I didn't know this. Uh, Wikipedia says that this is Capcom's best selling video game franchise with over 123 million units sold, which is really amazing because Capcom has so many other really big series. They've done Mega Man, Devil May Cry, Monster Hunter, Street Fighter. My favorite of them of their series is probably Ace Attorney, which is not as famous mm-hmm. as the others, but it's still pretty amazing that of all of those Resident Evil's like near the top or the top, you know? Yeah, I guess that makes sense though. Like those other ones are famous, but Resident Evil is there's movies, you know? Yeah. Yeah, there's movies, there's a whole CG movie line, and then live action uh, Hollywood movie line. So it is really, um, it's a big series. And today we're talking mostly about Ada Wong. Now there's actually a lot of really cool characters in this series and a lot of really cool female characters that are, you know, main characters. But for me, Ada Wong is really special. She is, and how am I going to say this without like fumbling all my words? (laughs) So she's, in short, she was, I would say, she's an Asian American anti heroine or femme fatale. That's kind of her type. She's mysterious and stylish. She has a cold exterior, but she actually has like a soft heart that she doesn't want people to see. And what people love about her, other than her, sort of exterior appearance being so like classy and cool and sexy and badass is that we never really know what side she's on in every game. You're not sure. Like, is she just pretending to be one of the good guys or is she pretending to be one of the bad guys? She's sort of, she's not even a double agent. She's like a triple agent (laughs) many times. Yeah. She, she's so good at like, getting people to trust her and deceiving them at the last moment that no one really knows who she's working for in every every game. Yeah, like you have no clue. There's just a mysterious, she's on her side, but you don't really know what that means. Like in abstract, I understand what that means, but in concrete, I don't know what that <laughs> means. Like what's her, you don't know what her goal is or like she's just always doing the bad thing but presumably for maybe a good reason but we don't know what that reason is at all (laughs) 
So she first appeared in Resident Evil 2. There was actually a letter that mentioned her name that I think was in the first game. And then oh, really? they Yeah, and I have a little bit more info on that later. But she first appeared like as a character that was in the game that you could talk to and interact with in the second game. And in the second game, the virus outbreak has left the one mansion and it's now throughout the Raccoon City, which is a name of a place, right? Very believable city name. And then she also reappears in Resident Evil 4. She has a really important relationship with with Leon Kennedy, which we're going to get into a lot more. No doubt about that. Oh, are you talking about my husband, Leon S. Kennedy? (laughs) All our husbands. If you have to pick one person to be your husband in this series, you're probably picking Leon Kennedy. Maybe, yeah. Well, (laughs) probably not, but for now. My note says, many people, including me, consider Leon Kennedy to be the best male character in the franchise. So I'm just sort of making a grand assumption that everyone feels like that. We know (laughs) that's not true, though, Mika. We (laughs) know there's a big Chris contingent out there. And I'm sure there's a Wesker contingent, too. Oh, there's probably a Wesker contingent. And those people should definitely listen to our podcast, not because we're going to talk about Wesker, but because they obviously like hot baddies. (laughs) The other thing I wanted to note, I didn't list all of them here, but... Uh, both Ada and Leon appear on a lot of best of lists when it comes to video game characters. Ada is often listed on the top female characters of all time, top villains, top anti-heroes, sexiest female characters. Her and Leon have appeared on best video game couples. And she is a an interesting case because she not only gets some of her own playable modes, in the games, which not a lot of characters do have like their own solo modes to play in these games. But she also is popular enough that she's made a lot of cameos in other Capcom games, such as the Onimusha series and Puzzle Fighter. So she is very well liked and Capcom is very good at figuring out which characters you're going to buy merchandise for and freak out about and making sure that they have everything you need to spend more money because you love this character. Is it possible to win too many superlatives, do you think? (laughs) I don't know. They're all like different, you know, magazines and websites and stuff. So I guess it's all right. That's the end of my summary about Ada. I did have a list of people here who have portrayed her. And I, I feel like I've probably missed a few because there are so many side games and CG movies and things. But she's primarily voiced by Sally Cahill. And this is the voice that I think most people think of when they think of Ada. She's later voiced by Courtney Taylor and in Japanese by Junko Minagawa. And I did find that Michelle Lee did the motion capture for Ada. I think that might have been for the first time she appeared in Resident Evil 2. I did see a note somewhere that it was really difficult to do the motion capture in her outfit. And that was one of the reasons why they changed her outfit a bit for Resident Evil 2 Remake. And then there are two film portrayals by Lee Bing Bing and Lily Gao. So shout out to all these wonderful women for portraying this amazing character. Yeah, that's really funny. I didn't know that thing about the motion capture for RE2. I mean, I believe it. But it it. makes a lot of sense. (laughs) Yeah, definitely. Okay, are we ready to talk about our first encounters with this character? I think so. Uh, When I was in high school, Resident Evil 4 came out, and my high school boyfriend was really into Resident Evil, and I hadn't really played it at all. And so we played that together, I think. Or maybe we played it separate, but that's when I started playing it, which is a super notable Ada appearance. And then after that, I was like, oh, I can play Resident Evil. And I think I played Resident Evil 0. I played Resident Evil 1. And then I I thought that I had played Resident Evil 2 and 3, but I did not realize that there were like multiple Resident Evil 2s and 3s. So I played Resident Evil 2 Code Veronica, which is not regular Resident Evil 2. I did not know that um, until kind of recently. And then I also played Resident Evil 3 Nemesis, 
Which is regular Resident Evil It's not 3, right? quite as bad as Kingdom Hearts, but there are a <laughs> lot of versions with a lot of naming styles. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and it's only gotten worse with all the like remakes that they've done. So I've played those ones and four. I played the demo for Village, but I haven't really played anything since then. That's interesting because your origin story is really similar to mine. I think I just got more obsessed with this character specifically. So I've been a horror fan for a really long time. And I I hate to admit this, but I was kind of a Silent Hill elitist. I didn't get into Resident Evil from the beginning because I liked the Silent Hill series and it's a little bit more like I don't think I like appreciated what Resident Evil was. I didn't know that part of the joy of it is kind of the campiness and the action-y stuff and the sort of spy and military vibe. And I liked Silent Hill because it was really like supernatural and it was very like uh, psychological horror. Like these main characters were really messed up and had these inner turmoils that I didn't find was happening in the Resident Evil series. So I was just really like, oh, I don't need to play that series because I like Silent Hill and I'm fine with that. And I was watching somebody that I lived with got the game Resident Evil 4 and I was like, yeah, whatever. I guess I'll just sit here watching play, but I'm not interested because it's Resident Evil, right? And I'm just like being a jerk about it. And then I see the scene where Leon's being attacked by Batoris Mendez and there's, you know, a gun goes off and then we see through the window the grappling hook and there's a woman in a red dress and she just like propels herself up. And that moment is incredibly iconic for me. That was the moment that turned my mind completely. I was like, what? It just happened here? Like, excuse me, who is that? Like, can we go back to that? And of course, when you play the game, that happens. You don't really find out more for a while. They kind of tease you with this as you play the game. Not to mention, because I replayed that game for podcast research, quote unquote, And I think that whole scene is actually optional. So the fact that you even saw that is actually by chance because you have to double back to get that scene. And I don't think you have to double back. I, yeah, you mentioned that I've never heard that it was optional, but that's really really? interesting if it was. Maybe you do end up having to do it. Cause I just remember you end up in the hallway cause he like pushes you out into the hallway. Right. And I was like, Oh, but I think there's something in there that I wanted to get, you know, treasure or whatever or herbs. And so I went back in <laughs> and then I got that scene, but maybe I'm wrong, but it felt optional. It felt like, Oh, if I hadn't have gone back, then I wouldn't have seen this, but maybe there's another reason you have to go back. I don't know. I think that's cool though. Like even if it's just that it felt optional, that's really good level design in my opinion, because yeah, it just makes you feel like, you know, you were in control of that narrative the whole time. I think it is. I think it's, cool. a, I see it called a hidden cut scene. So I think it's optional. That's amazing. So, so it's only by chance, like, would you even have gone down this path, Miko? Who yeah. would you be today? I would be very different because then, you know, not immediately, but not that long after, I became really into Resident Evil and also this character and this character's relationship with Leon. And the end result of that is I've made seven costumes as Ada Wong, and I have dressed as her in many events. Uh, I don't do this anymore. But I will say when the Resident Evil 2 remake came out, I saw that trench coat. I was extremely tempted (laughs) to get the sewing machine back out. (laughs) That is a nice trench coat. To brush off your, uh, your cosplaying materials. Yes, and we're going to get really into it in the spoiler episode. I I really resonate with this character. I think she's really amazing, and I love how she's portrayed, especially in Resident Evil 2 and Resident Evil 4. So those are kind of like my two, definitely my two favorite games in the Resident Evil series. So actually, we, we don't have much left in this episode, so we're going we're gonna to wrap this up for you, dear listeners. I guess we don't have a name for people who listen. We don't have like a, you know what, how people that have like a cool YouTube channel or something yeah. like call people their little min- minions or something. 
I feel like it goes one of two ways. Either either the creators make something happen, or yeah. I ca- would kind of love for our fans, presuming we have many at this point, would name themselves. What would our fans call themselves? Because yeah. I think that's the best. I think that sticks I think better. so, too. It's That makes it a community, right? So if you're listening to this, what do you want to call yourselves as fans of this podcast? You have to let us know. And also, like, just know that you won't hear us call you that in season one because it will have all been pre-recorded. <laughs> and exotic nudes is already taken. <laughs> I don't even, we'll just leave that and I guess they'll have to listen to the end to understand what we talked about in the pre-roll. All right. So in short, you might like Resident Evil if you love zombies, if you love survival horror, and if you like campy action movies, campy action vibes, there's a lot of that. And I think you'll like Ada if you like mysterious spy characters if you like people whose true intentions aren't known and if you like i don't know if i would call them star-crossed lovers but they're not quite enemies to lovers either i don't know what you call this kind of trope do you i think star-crossed is like kind of right because without getting into too many spoilers they're almost always set up on the opposite side and have to like overcome their jobs or like what they yeah. you know like what they're there to do to keep each other safe or you know help each other out so yeah i i think starcross lovers is right it's the closest it's like yeah they're very loyal to each other but their agendas are always in conflict so there's like yeah. a lot of angst and that's what feels so good and juicy about it. Yeah. At least on on Leon's part, it's definitely not an enemies to lovers. But on Ada's part, it might be. <laughs> <laughs> on Ada's part, it's kind of like, a, oh, do you exist to lovers? <laughs> like, <laughs> she has like, I'm sorry. Am I supposed to care that you're alive? <laughs> vibe. All right. So... As we said before, this is the first episode in a two-part episode about Ada Wong. In the next episode, we're going to get into all of the spoilers. We're going to go through the tags that make her a hot baddie. And then we're going to go through the first impression she makes in the game, her looks and personality, relationship material. And we're going to do some games, some conspiracies, give our final rating about her, and then induct her into the club. And if you need to know how do you consume content about Ada Wong, there is a lot of it. So I did try to get, this is not quite to the Dragon Ball Z level we had to do before. (laughs) but (laughs) There were multiple takes for Dragon Ball Z. I think I had to try three times to say all the things correctly. So I would say the absolute minimum to understand the character would be the Resident Evil 2 remake, which is an incredible game and came out pretty recently. This this is where it gets confusing. Resident Evil 2 and Resident Evil 2 Remake are slightly different in plot. So if you have to pick between the two, I think most people would want the remake because it's got great graphics. It's really polished. And then it gets even more confusing because you can technically play the game four times. There's two main characters, Leon and Claire, And you'll hear people say Leon A, Leon B, Claire A, and Claire B. And I'll try to say this in the way that makes the most sense, but it's very complicated. The first person you choose to play the game with, that's the A track. So if you choose Leon first, you'll play Leon A. If you choose Claire first, you'll pick uh, Claire A. And then when you finish that time through the game, you've now unlocked the other character's B route. So if you played Leon A, you would unlock Claire B. And if you played Claire A, you would unlock Leon B. The reason why this is so complicated is because there's different endings for all of them. Uh, So slightly different things happen with the Leon and Ada relationship in all of them. I think if you do the remake and you play Leon A, you'll be fine because that does have the biggest kind of bullet points of their story. 
And it's also like it's the thing you can get into the first. Otherwise, you'd have to play all of Claire A and then play Leon B to actually see what the whole story is. So if you get really into it, you can play all four. But at the minimum, I would recommend doing Leon A. Playing or watching a Let's Play or something. And at the very least, watching like a YouTube cutscene compilation if you're you're not going to play it or and you don't want to watch a yeah. Let's Play. Yeah, that's one of the things I get really into is like some people have done these no commentary or long play takes of the games. And if I just want to like relive the story, I'll go and watch it. It's really nice. Resident Evil 4 is the one that you should play after that. It looks like you can play any version except the original GameCube and the Oculus. The Oculus version is really good. However, it doesn't include the extra Ada stories where you get to play as her. And I think that you really don't want to miss those because there's some important plot details. Even though they're shorter, they're really fun. So if you're playing, I believe, starting with the PlayStation 2 version, the PC version, the Wii version, all of these should include separate ways and Assignment Ada. Assignment Ada is only like an hour long. It doesn't add too much to the plot, but it's fun. Also, it's like the best, in my opinion, the best costume. Yeah, it has a great costume. Yeah. Separate ways, I would really like you to uh, to play because I think it adds a lot of depth to her story. That's very important. So Yeah, I played Resident Evil 4 on the PlayStation PS4. Yeah. Okay, so it was like a re-release? I guess so, because the graphics were all kind of like up. They're, they're not updated. It's not like a total remake, but they definitely like looked a little nicer considering yeah. they were on the, a newer uh, system. And um, except for separate ways, which looked <laughs> like looked like super pixelated and blown up. So like the whole, the main game, which is like takes way longer th- to play than separate ways, all the cutscenes looked like they had had some other pass or re-render on them. And then Separate Ways just like did not get that treatment, but it's still totally playable. It's just like, be prepared. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How dare they? I have to add one other thing. I did play it on PS4. I don't know if it's some kind of bug about how I started the game or something, but it appears that the subtitles are not available on the PS4 version. There's a menu option that's grayed out and was never able to be clicked on. So if you require subtitles, don't buy the PS4 version or look into that and see if I had a bug or something, but it didn't seem like subtitles were available at all. Oh, that's that's a shame. Yeah. Yeah, so I have it on PS2, PC, and the Wii. The Wii, I mean, it's kind of old now, but if you are going to play it, it's actually pretty cool because the shooter mechanics are really great with the Wiimote. Like, it's easy to aim, and that's actually a really fun way to play. The Oculus one looks like it's really fun to play, too. I'm just sad that they didn't bring over Ada's special story. Yeah. Uh, Yeah, and then bonus... You could also play Resident Evil 6. It's true that Ada and Leon are in that game, and we are going to talk about them, but I think it's not as relevant to knowing this character and, you know, the main thing we're going to talk about. Also, that game is so long, and the Ada playthrough is the last one, I think, that you unlock, because you play it through, like, four times. Okay. I... I didn't play it. I just I started to watch a Let's Play and then I had to cut it short because I was like, I'm not going to be able to watch all of the Let's Play before (laughs) we're going to record. But it seems like that game is very, very long. So, you know, it's fine if you want to play it. No big deal. But you should know that it's very long. (laughs) And then she does appear in a few other games and movies in the live action series, she appears in Resident Evil Retribution and Resident Evil Welcome to Raccoon City as a end credit scene. So it's not like super important for you, but if you really want to see how she's portrayed in film, those are the two movies you can watch. Yeah. Also, I guess like additional watching if you're if you do all these things and you can't get enough. I also watched Resident Evil Damnation which was free on Tubi as of recording. And I wouldn't 
recommend it. <laughs> but if you like, if you get into this and you just need to watch everything, Ada is in that and Leon are both in that movie. See that? Yeah, I kind of got overwhelmed at that point because there's a lot of movies in that like that. They're like CG movies and they all have kind of similar names. And they're all kind of like that. Like they're like retellings of parts of the games where you see a scene kind of in a different way. Although I do appreciate the flirting and the scene I saw from that. I was like, oh, hello. Thanks for confirming this. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, Ada is actually kind of a main character in the movie even more than I feel like she gets to be in the games. So that was kind of nice to see. And she had like some action sequences and everything. And you definitely got to see her like snarky personality, but there wasn't enough like Leon Ada flirting. There's like one scene. Yeah. Um, there should no be smooches. More, zero out of zero smooches. Yeah. I don't know. It was okay, but it wasn't it wasn't my favorite. Like I wouldn't do that instead of any of these. I would do the other things first. Yeah. So the short version is Resident Evil 2 and Resident Evil 4, and uh, you'll be good to go. All right, so go ahead and play those or watch the Let's Plays. I think we're planning on putting links to some YouTube videos that we like that have compiled footage of this. And we'll see you in part two. This is where we do our sign off, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I'm a professional. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know why I said it that way. Like, oh no. Okay. (laughs) Once again, I'm Miko. You can find me on Twitter and Twitch as Dr. Mikachu. I'm Liz. You can find me primarily on Twitter at Liz Makes and almost everywhere else on the internet at Illuminated Space. And you can find the podcast. We have a website, hotbaddies.club. And this has been uh, the Hot Baddies Club. Thanks for listening. You quarantine when I go see my mom for several days and so I sent a box of ramen from exotic nudes to her house so I would have something to eat and I was like don't be alarmed it's only ramen but I need you to know that there's a box that's going to show up at your house that says exotic nudes on it and it's just noodles and she was like okay and then a couple days later she's like Oh, I get it now. <laughs> but she, she just kind of she let just it go accepted it. She just accepted the fact that a company called Exotic Nudes was going to send a box to her house, and that I promised it was food, and she didn't understand <laughs> the joke, and was still like, "Okay, sure."